Hi everybody, Kyle McCarley here. This video is gonna be, in the last video we talked about noise gating, this video is going to be on compression, which is uh, uh, something that I'm really, really excited about. Uh, it's something that I've been doing with analog equipment, but I've been doing it all wrong. And now that I have this lovely new mixer, this lovely new toy, I have a visual representation of what it's actually doing for me so I can dial in the settings uh, in such a way that, that actually seems to be working for me. If you are an audio engineer who knows this stuff already, you may look at the settings that I have and go, what are you thinking, you crazy person? But um, I've, I've toyed with it a lot so far um, already. I will continue to toy with it and tinker with it if I notice that it's doing things that I, that I don't like. But right now, it really seems to be working. So, um, that disclaimer out of the way, let's talk a little bit about what compression is when it comes to audio engineering. Last video we talked about noise gating, where we lower the volume of the unwanted audio that's, that's below our voices. Uh, this video we're talking about compression. So, essentially, when, when you're recording audio, you've always got to set your levels ahead of time. You've got to make sure that you're not going to be blowing out the recording software or, or your microphone or your, your hardware or whatever so that it's, it's getting a whole lot of distortion uh, when you record if it's too loud. So you've got to set your levels so that you're not getting any distortion. But when you do that, uh, a lot of times the really quiet stuff might not, it's, it's going to be way too quiet. It's going to be really hard to hear that stuff and you're going to have to boost the gain after the fact, which is going to boost the gain of your noise floor and make everything noisier. And that's a whole bunch of stuff that you don't want to happen. So compression is a method of kind of balancing the levels between the highs and the lows. Um, it's used a lot in radio uh, and, and, and fairly heavily in radio to the point where it, it's, it's, it sounds very boxy, the sound does. Um, but it makes, it makes your, you, you basically, you boost the gain from the get-go so that the quiet stuff is louder. And then in, to keep the louder stuff from getting distortion, the compression automatically lowers the volume, backs off the gain for you, basically rides the fader for you automatically, uh, to keep that stuff from distorting during your signal. Really useful for those of us who are recording auditions at home or audiobooks at home when you've got a little bit of dynamic changes happening and you don't want to have to think right, right brain, left brain at the same time and have to act as your engineer as well as an actor uh, all at the same time. So that's what I'm using compression for. Now, let's take a look at what compression is. So let's switch over to this view. And we've got, oh, look at that. I've already had a compressor active all this time. I didn't even realize it. Uh, that explains why it sounded so boxy to me. Um, but we'll go, we'll go over that in a second. So let's turn this off. Or, or actually, let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's turn this off to start with. So now, absolutely no compression. You can, you can notice that uh, my, my volume's gotten a lot quieter already. Um, so let's go, let's go over that. For a moment. So, oh hey, we're still all zoomed in from our uh, from our noise gating experiments. Okay, that's that's a normal view now. So, uh, there was an article that I read the other day that was on um, on how to implement compression for voiceover. This is obviously used in music as well, uh, you can, especially for drum kits and stuff that get really really loud. You can use compression for, for that. But I read an article on using it for voiceover, and the suggested set it, setup was to try and get to where your, uh, your audio signal was probably averaging around minus 18. So if this is, if this is my normal speaking voice, if this is how, I will, how loud I will normally be, you can see that I'm, I'm actually a little bit above minus 18. I'm probably averaging somewhere more around minus 15 or so. Or, well, I don't know. Something like that. You can look at the, look at the, oh, you can't really look at the meter down there, can you? Because I've, I'm covering it up. Let's move that for a second. So you can see now, looking at the meter down there, you can see where my voice is, uh, 
is kind of landing. It's somewhere, it's in the yellow range, which is, which is basically where you want it, at least in, in this software. So somewhere between minus 18 and minus 12, something like that. You don't want the loud stuff. If you're getting really loud, you don't want it doing that, if you can help it. Um, but uh, but that's, that's really, really loud. Anyway, basically your peaks shouldn't be going much higher than about minus 6. And if we look, uh, if we look in here, in this area, that's probably about minus 6. So that's, that's probably about where you want it to be, at least according to this, this article that I was reading. So let's go back over to our... Actually, no, let's let's keep that up in the top corner so that we can see that a little bit better. Or let's keep it up in this top corner, even better. Okay. So, uh, looking at this compression threshold, that, uh, that video then said to set your threshold. Um, so, the, this, uh, unlike noise gating, where noise gating engages below the threshold, compression engages above the threshold because it's lowering the stuff that's too loud, it's backing the stuff that's too loud down to stop it from, uh, from getting, from, from distorting. Um, it recommended putting the threshold somewhere below where your average is, which I really don't care for all that much, but uh, <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. Um, so your threshold, it, it said put it at minus 30 or minus 25. Let's, 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 lo let's raise it, let's do it at minus, Minus twenty five is now where where it uh, where it's going to sit, and then you want to and then they said you wanted to use a l a light compression ratio. They said three to one. We're even doing it less than that, two and a half to one. So uh, that means that it's for every two and a half decibels that come in to the signal, only one decibel is coming out. Uh, so let's turn on that compression. Oh, and then also I should mention that there's this uh, this gain adjustment. This boosts the overall signal by uh, by however much you set it to, so that uh, it it uh, th it's it's basically to compensate for uh, how much gain reduction is happening to the whole signal from the compressor being active. So uh, and it and it also it allows your your quiet stuff to be a little bit louder. So now I've got the the gain boosted by another six decibels, which you obviously heard. Um, and if we look at the, the little red gain reduction meter, you can see that it's just barely engaging, just a little bit, while I'm speaking, which is pretty good. But if I get loud, then it starts to engage a little bit more. Now, obviously, if I'm going to get that loud, I should probably back off the microphone a little bit. But even if I don't, you can see... We only got a little bit of distortion there. In fact, let's let's play that back really quick. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, for whatever reason, the the capture software and Audition are not playing nicely together, so it's not actually letting me play back audio to you guys. I don't know why. So instead, I've exported a little waveform, and we'll listen to that through other so, software. Here you can see that it's just barely engaging, just a little bit, while I'm speaking, which is pretty good. But if I get loud, then it starts to engage a little bit more. Okay, so right when I said loud was this this little bit of distortion, and you could you could sort of kind of hear that. Uh, there are post production processes you can do to kind of try and clean that up, but uh, essentially that's that's a uh, basically the uh, the the compression mitigated some of the damage from that. Let's turn that uh, let's turn that compressor off now. And you can you can hear that our our bass level is a little quieter. But uh, turning that compression off now, and continuing to record from about this point on, um, let's uh, let's look at what happens now. If I get really loud, then I'm gonna be blowing things out, and you're gonna be hearing a lot of distortion. Um, and it's it's even it's that's even mitigated a little bit by the fact that uh, that our bass level is a little quieter. Than it was without the compression, but if we set that gain to the same spot that it would be, or th that it was that the bass level was with the compressor on, and then we to start shouting, you're gonna hear a whole lot of distortion, which is really not good. So that is why we use the compressor. So now um, I kind of I talked a little bit about this. How this these were kind of sort of the settings that uh, that were recommended for for voiceover purposes in this article that I read the other day. 
but uh, I was noticing how just like even though it's only engaging a little bit, it is engaging constantly. You can see the little red gain reduction just kind of tripping just a little bit. It's just kind of kicking in on everything that I say. Um, there are some, but by the way, there are there are some other settings that you can toy with. Uh, this knee setting here, on at least in this, uh, kind of controls how you can see this this blue line here indicates um, what uh, at what point the compressor gets engaged and by how much. So you can see right there is our threshold where that that corner is the knee, as they call it. Um, right now it's a hard corner set set at zero. I had it set at three where it's a little bit smoother, so it kind of starts to kick in just a little bit, a little earlier, uh, but it's not fully engaged until a little bit later. Five, it's even smoother, so it, you can see that the, the little red is kicking in even sooner, just a little bit. Um, but uh, so this is this is kind of a roundabout where, uh, at least where, it, like, here, I can even press this this button. So, yeah, pretty similar, but, uh, it, yeah, th this is where the software suggested we have our settings. I had it at minus 25, whoops, with a 2.5 ratio. Oh, not 32.5. There we go. And I was using a little bit softer knee than they were. But anyway, basically the same the same kind of thing. Um, also, this the, the compressor has similar settings, the attack and release stuff. Similar settings to what we were using in the gate. This particular uh, setting on my my mixer has an auto time thing that seems to be working fine for me, so I'm just using that. Um, but if I need to dial those settings in manually, I can. Uh, as you can see, they're not a whole lot different from the settings that we're using for the for the gate. The release is a little bit faster, but not by a whole lot. Anyway. This setting, this this recommended setting for voiceover, you can see is being tripped on basically everything I'm doing. I don't like that because it sounds boxy. It sounds a little bit too much like a radio DJ to me, where it's it's uh it's boosting all of my loud, all of my quiet stuff, but it's lowering all of my loud stuff, and it's affecting basically every word that comes out of my mouth, even if it's only just a little bit. So now I'm gonna load up my compression settings, which are a little different. Okay, now you can see here, looking at this, this is a much more aggressive compression, a 20 to one ratio, but the threshold is higher. So looking at this, you can see that, uh, that the, the gain reduction is not kicking in when, when I'm just speaking normally. And it's obviously not gonna kick in when I'm really quiet. But when I'm really quiet, you can hear me a little bit better than you can without the compression, right? Because now, now I'm really quiet, and you can see in that waveform just how quiet that is. If I were gonna send in audio that was that, that quiet, I'd probably boost it after recording, which is gonna boost the volume of my noise floor and everything too, um, which I, is something I, I don't really wanna do. So with my compression activated, I've now boosted, and I'm still talking about the same, you know, pretty quiet here, but you can see just how much louder my waveform is in, in audition right there so that makes it that makes it a little bit makes the quiet stuff louder and even in my normal speaking voice there's no compression happening whatsoever you can you can see that on the gain reduction meter there's no red kicking in at all i've got a really hard knee so anything that br that does cross the threshold it's going to get aggressively compressed so now if i get loud you can see the compression kicking in pretty, it's, it's, it's pretty active once it crosses that threshold. And then let's, let's look at the waveform. Still a little bit of, a little bit of distortion, but not a whole lot. And I was really loud and I was right in the mic, right up on it. Like I didn't back up at all. Obviously, if you're a voice actor, you know, usually you kind of want to take a little bit of a step back or a half step back if you're gonna start screaming like that. And I did back up that time, and as you can see, not really any distortion at all. I mean, it did, it hit, it hit the top right there for just a blip. But I could probably send that in for an audition. You know, that's, that's probably okay. So, 
This is why I'm using a very aggressive compressor, uh, compressor with a really high threshold. It's at minus 20 dB here, um, which I'm, my mind is, I'm scratching my head a little bit as to why it's not being engaged a little bit sooner. But uh, thankfully, because I have this graphic representation of when it's actually being used, I can tell that it's not being used when I'm just speaking normally. And it's only kicking in when I start to get really loud. Which is pretty cool. You should be aware that uh, if you are doing this, that, like, obviously I've, I've got a fancy new toy that's doing this for me. Um, you can do compression in other ways. I have some old analog equipment that, uh, that does do this, but it's really hard to tell when it's actually engaging and when it's not because there is no fancy graphical interface like this. Um, there aren't, the, the meters are a little bit harder to read and stuff. Um, but there are other ways to do this. You can do this in, you can't really do this in post. And it's because of the fact that if your initial recording gets distortion, the compression isn't going to help it. But you can do it in your software while recording through like VST plugins and stuff. The problem with that approach is you can't really monitor it while it's happening. You'll have to monitor, you'll have to listen in your headphones uh, at a hardware level without the compression activated and just trust that the software is doing its job and then listen to it afterwards to make sure that it actually did. Um, because at a software level, uh, when you start engaging effects like that, it adds a little bit of a delay to the monitoring playback. And if you're hearing your own voice coming through just a little bit behind when you're actually speaking, it completely throws off your train of thought and you can't, you can't do it. You can't work that way. So that's, that's kind of the drawback behind doing it at a software level, but you can do that. Like I, I could do that in audition. And there are other hardware level solutions that will do the same, the same kind of thing. If this was enjoyable to you or, or informational for you, or if you have any questions, let me know. If you know better than I do about, uh, about some of this stuff and you think that my approach uh, is crazy to, to, have it such, to have such aggressive compression set up like that, um, let me know if you think that this is a terrible idea. It seems to be working just, just based on my ears and based on my eyes, what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing are telling me that it's only engaging when I really, really need it to. And then when it does, it acts fast and it acts hard, um, which I kind of like because it allows, it allows me to do my job as an actor without having to think about your job as an engineer. I'm rambling now. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you around.